Hello fellow earthlings, it's Libs, and today I thought I'd do a fun video where I show you my childhood bookshelf. So we are currently in lockdown at the moment. Um, I'm at my childhood home. All the content I'd filmed is not finished and I cannot finish it from here, so this is a very very random, very spontaneous video. Um, yes. So I haven't actually looked through this bookshelf for many years, but I feel like there may be hopefully some hidden gems on here, some books I'd like to reread or talk about, or, or something. We like bookshelf tours, right? Everyone likes a good bookshelf tour. Okay, so this this is my bookshelf. Um, I'm awkwardly sitting on the piano stool at the moment because I cannot um, fit this in any other way. This is a very narrow room. But let us start with the top shelf. Ooh. Okay. Well, I think we know there's some certain books I'm not going to talk about, so we'll skip this section. Um, what have I got over here? This is not very well organised. I vaguely remember these books. I think I remember liking them quite a bit as a kid. I don't know if I ever finished this series or if it would even hold up today. We've got a couple of my um, John, John Greens. Um, I never read An Abundance of Catherine's. I think I just bought every single one of his books at one point and then only read like the most popular so that was that was fun i've also got um will grayson will grayson which i also never read i won i wonder if the others are hidden here um i've got my copy of to kill a mockingbird that i read um for the first uni degree i attempted um you can see i've got lots of sticky notes in there um I, I don't know. I don't know. I never read that. Um, oh, I have the biography of Joan of Arc, which is quite cool. That doesn't surprise me that I would have something like that. Um, up the top here, oh, we have The Dog Who Loved a Queen by Jackie French. I loved this series of books when I was in primary school. Um, I think this book helped establish my obsession with Mary Queen of Scots. I remember there was a Viking one and it was a goat or something that was also in this series that was very cool. Um, over here we've got oh, um, Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I didn't actually love this book as much as everyone else seemed to, but it was pretty good, but I'm probably not gonna finish the, the series. Um, these books. These books were some of my favourite as a kid. Um, they were like diaries of different famous um, royal women. I remember reading Cleopatra, um, Marie Antoinette, Mary Queen of Scots, Mel Eleanor of Aquitaine. There were some very, very cool ones. And I remember my um, tutor bought me these when I was in year five. Um, I've, of course, got... The Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, I should probably try and film this a bit better, but oh well. Um, I did actually read all of those. Um, oh, we're gonna have the um, the Fallen books very much out of order. Um, they were terrible, terrible books. Oh, they were so bad. Um, oh, yep, yeah, here we go. These are the very very weird books. Um, we've got some of the Twilight books. Um, I do not remember it being this big. Damn, I can't believe I read that. Um, we have my recorder, which is probably very gross and has not been used since year five. Um, oh, God, these covers were so bad. They're very bad covers. Um, Looking for Alaska, my favorite John Green book. Ah. Uh, it's not, not a great cover though. Um, what else have we got? Oh, the Shiver. At least I think it was the Shiver. Oh dear, they're upside down. Wow, okay. 
Yes, you can tell that it wasn't me who organized this bookshelf. Um, I wonder if these books would hold up. I feel like they wouldn't. I really don't think these books would be any good in hindsight, but I did very much enjoy them when I was in my YA stages. Um, the Tragedy Paper is a book that I bought because some YouTubers were talking about it back at the end of high school and I never read it. Oh, I read, I read that much of it. We have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, which I liked, but probably would never read again. Um, a whole heap of books that I've never read. I do not even know what this is, but I get the vibes just from looking at the, um, the cover. Oh, look, another one I read like 5% of. Oh, yeah, yeah, that seems like something I would have been desperate to like <laughs> in high school or oh, okay shelf three we have essentially just a lot of a lot of streamers okay oh we have the fun my um special deluxe edition of the hunger games the two anthony um anthony horowitz books that i actually own um, good old Stormbreaker and Snakehead. I definitely read all of these up to this. Oh, that feels cool. Um, I remember this one quite well. I didn't finish the series after this book, though. Um, I only ever read the one book in this series. Um, I remember because my primary school used to do, um, like a writer's festival and different, um, authors would come and talk about their books. And this was one of the books and it sounded really cool. So I bought it. Um, my old copy of Othello that is, um, that I had to read for uni. Oh, this, this book that I vaguely remember, Forsaken, The Demon Trappers. Um, I think I really was into this photographer who did the photography for this book. And so I bought the book, but I never finished the series. Um, my other Hunger Games books. The one Lemony Snicket book I own because they never had this at the library when I was a kid. So I really wanted it. Um, a singular Artemis Fowl. Um, these books I never read that were about diving. Um, more... <laughs> more twilight this one was a pretty cool cover though i'll give it that this was a cool cover oh that i apparently also never finished dang okay and then the rest of the fallen series Ugh. Ugh. okay the second to last pile shelf pile and shelf okay Ugh. Oh, I loved this book. This is The Girl in the Cave by Anthony Eaton. Um, I'm pretty sure this is signed. Yes, there we go. I remember meeting him at that writer's festival my school used to do. Oh, we've got one of my favourite Agatha Christie's, which is Sleeping Murder. Um, I haven't read either of these ones though the um pale horse or crooked house but i should Ooh, i remember good old clarence bean books i think i had three of these and they were pretty good i think from what i remember of being a kid and enjoying them um what else have i got here oh I remember good old Magpie Mischief. I think the author came and spoke to us in school about this one. And then good old Spy Master, which was one of those choose your own adventure stories. And I had all of the ones in this um, series, but I do not know where they are. And then I've got a couple, um, yes, I've got The Witches, which is very cool, and Charlotte's Web. Unfortunately, it's the book um, film tie-in edition, which is a bit less cool. Oh, 
this is just going to be a shelf of books I haven't really read. Okay. Um, well, we have this very overpriced textbook for a course I dropped because I learnt that um, I really didn't like my lecturer for criminology, so I dropped the subject because he was pretty mean. Um, more than this by Patrick Ness, I actually still do want to read, um, and it's a very cool cover. So I might take that one back with me. Um, Beautiful Creatures, I n never read. Um, the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. I loved The Book Thief and I bought more of his work and then I never really finished it because I didn't think it was nearly as good. Um, oh, back the first time I tried to make a YouTube channel, I remember reading this book by Sarah Dessen, The Moon and More, and I hated it. But everyone really liked my review of it at the time. I think it was um, like the main love interest reminded me of like an ex-boyfriend. So I really hated this book. And it's sad because the one other Sarah Dessen book was like my favourite book of my like, entire childhood young adult life. Um, that was Just Listen. So I was super disappointed by this book. Ah. Ah. This reminds me of when I really wanted to be a fashion person and just never quite managed to make that work. Um, a book I was meant to read for uni when I was doing in my English, attempting to do an English degree and never read another Clarence Bean book. I think this might be the first one. Um, I did not read them in order, that is for sure. But I, again, I really liked these when I was a kid. My other Rainbow Rowell books have got Eleanor and Park, which I don't think holds up even a little bit. And then Fangirl, which I think we were all obsessed with for a good while there. Um, I probably would reread that just to see what it's like now that I'm actually a uni, proper uni student who's actually not immediately going to drop out. Um, a Great and Terrible Beauty, that is an awful cover, but... Um, I never read that one. I did read The Coldest Girl in Cold Town that one year in like 2013 or 14 where we all were obsessed with this book for some reason and none of us know why. Yeah, I, I don't know why we all liked this book. I haven't seen a single person talk about it fondly, so <laughs> yay. Um, the Time Traveler's Wife, which again, clearly have never read. Paper Towns, I did read. Um, oh, you know, that's that's also a very bad cover. Uh, um, I actually quite like this book a lot. I've never seen the movie version because I just feel like it won't be as good. Um, the Host by Stephanie Meyer. Oh, I can't believe that was in the 50 books you can't put down category, but okay. Um, I remembered kind of liking it when it came out but I think it was more because it was just very different for Stephanie Myers and I thought it was way better than Twilight and therefore I thought it was good but I somehow doubt that if I read it today I'd think it was good um and then obviously I never read A Clockwork Orange who are we kidding I bought popular books I just never read them oh uh, now I've got no idea what is going on here um okay so it's just a very weird stack this book which was about handle um i remember that picture book quite well um a book of mazes okay um oh more more twilight stuff which again i feel like everyone else thought i was way more into twilight than i ever was I quite liked Twilight back in the day when I was like 13, but I think it ended up being like a thing I liked for about one or two years, but a lot of other people liked for a lot longer. And so then I ended up with a lot of stuff. Um, Egyptology, which uh, I loved these books so much when I was a kid. Oh, they were just very, very cool. I might take this one back with me as well because... I'd quite like some of the info in here, but these were just the coolest books ever. Oh, I remember this. How Emily, B Ugh. How Emily Blair got her fabulous hair, which was a book about this little girl 
who was super jealous because she had straight hair and her best friend had this super cool curly hair. And then she found out it was okay for her hair to be straight because she could do all these fabulous braids that no one else could do. Which, yet yeah, to be fair, if this is what your friend looks like, you would be jealous. I'd be jealous. <laughs> oh, and I have a Shirley Barber book in here. I used to love these as a kid. They had the cutest illustrations. Um, this one is a puzzle book, though. But, like, I mean, look at how cute these illustrations are. I... I'm always looking for these books because they must be somewhere, but um, I like adored them so much. And yes, yeah, so you'd have the cute little stories here, and then you have the beautiful illustrations here, and then you could do them in puzzles, and then yeah, it told you what to do. But these are so these were so cute, and I remembered all these different fairy ones as well that were just amazing. Oh. Okay, I'm going to end up doing a huge hunt trying to find them. I might do a video where I share some of these um, these ones because they're just so beautiful and I feel like kids today would love them because they're just they're so pretty and cool. Ooh. A surprise for Daddy Bunnikins. I'm not surprised that this has managed to stick around for a long time. A sticker book of dogs very important educating Rita I had to read this for uni and then is anything else worth talking about as you can probably tell looking at my bookshelf there were I really wanted to work in like the fashion industry for a while so I had like the teen vogue handbook which just kind of was how a lot of people like got their jobs working for teen vogue I mean it was quite cool um I think my major issue was it, they were all like very American perspective and that's not quite how it works in Australia. But you know, this was very cool and uh, still kind of wish I could but most of the magazines have shut down in Australia since COVID so the likelihood of being able to do it is not really there. Um, I also had so many like photography books. Um, I don't know how actually cool the some of these were, but um, yeah, they existed. What else? Because yeah, I had my um, like this style book as well, which was also from when I wanted to work in fashion. Oh, um, this one probably was not the most useful though. I think, yeah, the, the Vogue one, and then I remember I also had the model's handbook from when I did modelling, which I think had some information, but it was also, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was actually, in hindsight, very good at all. Oh. Oh. Oh, I want to make cupcakes. No, I want to make cupcakes. I'm somehow doubting there'll be any vegan cupcakes in here, but... Oh, yum. Okay, so that was a very weird tour of my childhood bookshelf. I don't know what else to say. This is a very spontaneous, very random video, but hopefully you enjoyed that and it reminded you of your childhood slash young adult lives. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.